Hello, it's Scott Manley here and I'm being extra quiet because right now I have a little kid sleeping about 10 feet away from me. So yes, the developers for Kerbal Space Program just decided to release this game when I'm completely indisposed, but I had to go the extra mile to get something out to you guys to show what's going on here. Now, if you look on the title screen, in the bottom right corner, you see the version number is 0.19.049. This is like an internal build number, and this is basically a sign of the way that they're changing the release process. If you remember, if you were there on Tuesday night, uh, the community manager, uh, Damien, basically revealed that they had just released the... Uh, the first test version for internal use and now like four days later five days later they have released an actual you know released it publicly so there hasn't been much testing going on and you know I'm guessing this may not be as polished as some of previous releases but I think the idea is that we're going to get more releases faster and we're going to iterate on these things so let's uh let's start this overwrite it and we'll just take a take you through what's going on now. Of course, the the thing that people have most talked about is uh, the re-entry effects. There's actually two atmospheric effects, and the easiest way to see these atmospheric effects is well, actually, and let's just go back. New. Well, the easiest way to see these atmospheric effects is to take a probe body and stick it on the front of a solid rocket booster, and then we'll launch it. So yeah, the re-entry effects will occur when you're going fast enough. Also, note new Space Center assets. The new launch pad is way more awesome, although uh, I won't have as many things to land on. I guess I'm going to have to try and land on the top of the water tower again sometimes. Sometimes, sometimes. I wonder if the I wonder if the ladder's still here. It looks like there's still a ladder here for Kerbals to climb on. We'll have to see if the animation still works. But yeah, let's launch this and we'll see what goes on. So yeah, there's two atmospheric effects that have been added. These are when you're going at speed in the atmosphere. Once you get above about five, six hundred meters per second, you get a you know a misting or like a, that looks. I think it's supposed to resemble something along the lines of a Prandtl Glert singularity, which I think I may have mispronounced that, and the aerospace engineers will probably have my head over it. But that's basically uh, what's called a Mach, you know, like what people call a Mach shock cone or whatever. It's it's where you get a the shock wave generated due to it. There we get it there. See the white mist just around it? And that doesn't last very long. But now we go really fast and we get flames from the, the re-entry effects. And of course, they say re-entry effects, but they're just basically when you're going fast inside the atmosphere, you get these. And, uh... Well, you know, we won't get one of them on the way down, I doubt. We could try and find out. But it's much better if we actually get a real spacecraft into orbit. So let's go to the space. Actually, I think if we come out, we can probably go to a training scenario, right? Start game. And scenarios. We have impending impact on the moon. That's not good. Station one. Station... I can stop to fill up. Oh, I wonder what this is. I've never tried this scenario before. Let's take a look at it and see what it's like. I wonder if I can deorbit the station. Wow, that's a pretty cool station. Ah, oh, I wonder if we can deorbit this sucker. <laughs> I'm a terrible person. I I had not I had not actually been looking at these things. Okay, so I wonder if we turn this whole thing. Uh, well, that's pretty pretty agile under RCS. Let's uh, point ourselves that way and try translating. This could take some time. That seems relatively stable. So I just need to adjust my orbit for long enough and surely I will find myself getting... Look, there's a... There are rocket engines there. But I just want to deorbit the whole thing to see what happens. There's <laughs> nothing more than that. Let's uh let's go to the map screen and hit this. Okay, Periax is there. Okay, so this should go that's going relatively quickly. Uh um I have been told, however, that trying to do something this large may cause my computer to just grind to a halt. Uh but I'm prepared to take that risk for, for my fans. <laughs> Seriously, it's like there could not have been a worse time for this to to start this release. Uh, you know, not that I think that they're particularly out to get me. Of course, they're not. They're 
there's just a you know business is business and we're getting things out i'm really happy to see these releases going out faster um we will i hope that uh this will continue we really are you know i think i think we've had a very long time since uh, the start of december when we've had the, f the last big release i guess we had a release in mid December, where we added one more planet and we fixed a bunch of bugs, and then we've moved to Unity 4. And now this is really the first proper release. Now, the other things that have been added in this are rover wheels, and we weren't sure whether we were going to get those. But it turns out that uh, they're at least they're stable enough, uh, perhaps, or at least not but sufficiently buggy, that uh, they have been considered for... A ch uh, for well, we've added they've they've been added to the release, I guess, and that's good because I look forward to uh, having official support for wheels inside the game. Uh, there's uh, three sets of wheels that come with the game, and they all use the they all use electricity, so you can build yourself some solar powered rovers. There's like tiny, tiny rover wheels. There's you know proper buggy wheels, and then there's huge, ginormous, I don't know, giant space platform wheels. Maybe if you want to build yourself a launch pad on another planet, those would be perfect for it, but we'll see what happens with those. Let's, uh, look, it's coming down! How how crazy is this going to look? Maybe I should have figured out something else to say in the meantime. <laughs> I actually started out today making Star Conflict videos, and then, well, you know, life got in the way, and I couldn't even get time to do that. Uh, my Star Conflict uh, license has run out, and uh, getting this down, I'm just 55 kilometers. How, how low do I have to go? I guess I'm just going to keep on doing this until my fuel runs out. And then we'll see what the whole thing looks like. Everyone's asked me to deorbit Space Station, so I haven't tried loading my previous saves. Goon Station uses all uh, stock parts, so it. Oh, uh, we might actually be out of resources now. We are out of monopropellant. Okay, so now time to zip around and see what this whole thing looks like. Where's the where's the planet? There we go. Oh, it's going to go on the night side. Also note is that the visibility on the dark side of the planet has been vastly reduced. You see that everything on all sides is just lit by the ambient light. There is no there is no lights, night side lighting anymore, other than that which you bring with you. Also, in the bottom right corner, watch the reactions of the, the pilots as they do their thing. <laughs> Look at Jebediah sitting there, always amazed with everything, just forever, you know, astounded by the wonders of space. As we come around, you see now that we actually have illumination. So that's a, that's a nice thing to have. Okay. We're starting to come down. Let's uh, just get rid of this. I mean, you know, what do we need to know from this? Nothing, nothing, right? Uh, we could probably... Oh, wow! With the deuce! I shouldn't have actually fired. I hit the space bar when I was throttled up. That was not what I expected to have happen. Okay. Well, that's going to be fun. I wonder how many... If, whether all of these things will create shooting stars. <laughs> I guess this still has a couple of guys inside it. They're they're kind of less freaked out. Okay, let's time accelerate again. Time accelerate. Space Station One land. It's called a lander, huh? I wonder where the rest of the plane la ended up. It must be somewhere. I could probably switch around and find out where they are. Let's see. Spacecraft panel thing. Um, something... Oh! I guess that's where part of the space plane is. No? But there's no pilot on board that. Oh, there's the rest of the space plane. <laughs> oh yes, deorbiting a space station. That was what I was asked. That was my the first request I got. Hey Scott, version 0.19 is out. I need you to deorbit a space station. Well, he actually said, I need you to deorbit your space station. Let's see if we can get some re-entry effects. Oh, that solar panel's still working just fine despite we're skimming through the atmosphere at some rate of knots. Oh no, we're gonna fly out again, it looks... No, no, I need atmosphere to capture me so that I fall back down. 
This is called Aero Breaking. Looks nice though. I'm, are there any new parts on this? I, so there's no new engines and what we do have is new parts. We have a new probe body which is even smaller and lighter than the, the Stay Putnik. We have some new structural parts which include girders and rover bodies. Obviously we have wheels and I think that's largely it. Maybe there's some more aerodynamic stuff. I don't remember. But um, yeah, we are just flying back out to space. How dull is this? I remember when I was a child and Skylab was falling back to Earth and they weren't sure where it was going to land. There was quite a lot of concern. See, Skylab was put up by an Apollo rocket and the idea was that the space shuttle would come online. It, it didn't, and, and at some point the space shuttle would go up and give it a boost into a higher orbit to maintain it. Unfortunately, the space shuttle was delayed and Skylab fell back to Earth. And in fact, they, you know, early on they tried to keep it going, but uh, the problem was that they, well, one of the problems was that they then figured it might fall over populated areas, so they actually changed it from you're trying to keep it going to try to turn it you know flat on into the the airstream so that it would slow its uh, velocity more and make it f land and in the end i think it landed over australia uh but yes yeah, skylab that was a that was america's first space station it did some fantastic research in you know solar with their solar telescope uh, apparently Operating the solar telescope was like playing two grand pianos at the same time. Here we go. Come on. We must be getting low. I, I, I want to see these effects kick in. So what do you think will happen first? Do you think we'll see re-entry effects first? Or do you think the solar panels boot will be torn off? Come on, place your bets. Place your bets. I suspect that we'll see re-entry effects first. Because there we go. Look at that! Oh, rather marvellous, isn't it? And that, uh, apparently, what they have on one side is they have... Oh, there's this panel's going. On one side they have basically an artificial lighting source on one side that figures out which areas are getting hot. And then they, from that they are, are generating what is a hair shader, apparently. It's designed... or fur. And that... Oh, there we go! How nice! Um, I wonder if I should try and save these dudes. Now nah, let's just EVA him out. <laughs> mm, I'm a bad person. I'm a bad, bad person. Are you too feeling hot? Well, it's okay. You're heading towards the ocean, so you'll cool down soon enough. There, let's go back to this. It looks far more impressive doing this. Um, I wonder if there's any rockets... Can I fire up this rocket? No, there's no fuel in the whole spacecraft, huh? Oh, there is liquid fuel. And um, why should it? Can I act activate engine? Oh, there we go. Okay, so maybe, maybe I can slow this down enough. Okay, how do I point this? I'm bringing up my artificial horizon. Uh, how do I control? You know, if I do control from here, there we go, and then. I want to aim this upwards. Maybe I have enough thrust in this engine. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, how much fuel do I have? I'm going to wait until I get low enough. Maybe I can soft land this. You know what? If I ditch this, undock. Okay. And control from here. Okay. Okay, I have a space thing attached here. Come on, get off of there. There we go. Yeah, we don't need you around. We want to lose as much mass as possible. And... This isn't going to work. I'm losing speed too fast. Let's turn on RCS. Maybe I, I can maybe I can use, lose just enough velocity to survive this. No, this is not going to work. It might, it might, I might have survived if I'd come down over land. But this is going to be a big, heavy splashdown. Like, oh look, bit survived. Unfortunately, no bits with the uh, corbels on board. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> now look, we have the synchronized swimming team of the girder segments.
Well, anyway, that was that was rather fun, wasn't it? Let's go and take a look at some buggies, huh? Uh, space center. Let's try and build something. Let's try and build myself a, a little launcher thingy for a space probe. So we start out with a cube. We're going to attach something to attach, 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 attach. There. Go. Oh, yeah, that'll do. We'll stick that on there. And that on there. And then we're going to find some wheels. The wheels are here. And apparently they're not in the default. They're not in a useful rotation by default, but there we go, that'll work. So we need some power source for this, so I'm just going to use RTGs. These th wheels need one power unit each, so I'm going to need four. One, two, we'll stick some on the side here. X, there we go. Nice, so that should, that should work. Now what I want to do is attach a launcher to the top of this. Something with wings. The idea being I'm going to drive really fast and then hopefully I can let it go and it will fly away onto its own mission, doing its own thing, as these things do. Okay, come on. Um, what are you doing here? There we go. That's good. Let's turn off symmetry. And, 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 and. Yeah, let's put a little girder. Oh, I wonder if I can attach wings to this. That would be kind of cool. No, you can't attach wings directly to a decoupler, can you? Uh, oh, maybe. Ah, there, let's do that. Let's just attach some wings to the decoupler. Let's get the the long ones. Long wings, decoupler, duplicate. Okay, nope. Find which way to rotate it. There we go. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. How's that looking? Okay, I want to pitch them back, though. Yeah, and I do want to rotate them just a bit. There we go. So if I go fast enough, this thing will want to pitch up and then I can detach. Okay, so let's let's see if I can actually launch a glider just from the speed of these tires. Good thing I went for RTG rather than solar, eh? Okay, eight, nine. I'll know if I'm doing well if the back of the aircraft pitch, picks up, right? Or the back of the cart picks up. I had planned originally when I heard that they were adding rovers and re-entry effects and all this. My plan was to, you know, combine all these and basically head off to Lathe and re-enter the atmosphere at like 10 kilometers per second with a rover and watch it scream across the sky. But uh, this, I guess, is going to have to do. Okay, let's detach and see what happens. Oh, look at that! It flies! It flies! Look at that! Brilliant! <laughs> Marvelous! Look at this thing go! It's gonna pitch up, and there's the other one pitching underneath. This thing's gonna stall now. Hopefully, it'll nosedive just a little. <laughs> I think that's a rather good test. Um, it's just gonna hang here. It's probably gonna in infiniglide forever. Well, okay. Um, as I said, I have very limited time and I am trying to keep quiet here. So I'm going to I'm going to leave this hovering over the space center and we'll do something proper in, in a day or so when I actually have time. Till then, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.